I, I think I felt like you know we were a bunch of amateurs, challenging, challenging the the terrible faceless monster. Call it a blow against humanity. After six games over nine days, Deep Blue, the IBM computer, beat Garry Kasparov, considered to be the best chess player in the history of the game. And whoa! Deep Blue Kasparov! The great Russian champion was not a graceful loser. Grandmasters, there are many, many hundreds of them now, and there are a few grandmasters who are so far superior to their colleagues that they should introduce something like super grandmaster. And one could argue that Kasparov also needs a category all to himself. I think we should call the ca category Kasparov, just, you know, it's Kasparov. I think Gary has now established beyond any doubt that uh, he's the strongest player in history. We've debated this for many years, but we debated it when he was 30. Now at 40, to increase his playing strength means he is the strongest player ever in the history of the game. <laughs> He's been on the top of the chess world for 15 years now, or 16 or 17, I don't know. He's always been substantially ahead of everyone else. So, it's a Kasparov. What is this place? It's the central chess club of the Soviet Union. I think fairly early on it was clear that faster computing led to better performance in chess programs. And as programs got faster and faster, we started to think maybe if it was this fast, it would be enough to beat the world champion. This is the die that's designed 1985 to 1986. It's essentially a silicon chess board. It's a city, uh, single ch chess move generator about 36,000 transistors and generate about 2 million moves per second maximum throughput guarantee not to exceed that and who designed it? I designed this they asked me if I would be interested in uh, in you know helping to train the, uh, the the program to play against Kasparov I thought well that's a great opportunity you know so I, I couldn't let that one go by, so that's how I got into the computer world. Computers first came on the scene uh, back in the late 40s. Uh, scientists were thinking of, of grand challenges. What could computers do that were never, was never possible before? And one of the, the first ideas that came out was, a, as a grand challenge, as a holy grail, how could you get a computer to, to play world championship level chess? Initially, everybody thought it was an easy problem. Computing can so much faster than a human being, right? It should be a piece of cake for the computer. It's not, it was much harder than that. What the real live chess player does is take in the whole position in one conscious awareness. And then a, ch a really good chess players have an enormous capacity to remember entire positions on the board and to see possibilities. The, uh, the machine doesn't do that. Computers play uh, basically by calculation. They just say, okay, it's, if, it's, if it's my move, what are my possible moves? If I go there, then you can go there, and then I go there, and it just continues on in a string like that and every position along the way gets, gets evaluated. But the difficulty with chess is that the numbers become astronomical very fast. If you just multiply 
I have eight moves, you have eight counter moves. I have eight counter moves to each one of your eight counter moves, and you have eight counter moves to each one of my eight counter moves. It's soon uh, the numbers are as big as the universe. In fact, that number, the number of atoms in the universe, is a trivially tiny number compared to the number of games you can play up to move 40. So the problem with chess has always been how the hell do you solve the exponential problem? How do you solve the problem of the sheer size of the numbers involved? Now what these guys have, the technique has got a beautiful name. It's called brute force. And this chip they duplicated, they made many hundreds of copies and put 200 of them into a machine and let them work in parallel. Deep Blue was running 200 million positions per second. Here comes this 17-year-old, 18-year-old, who's just slowly being let out into the world by the Soviet sport authorities. And Gary was just smashing people, very solid, senior, professional grandmasters who do not lose in 30 moves at all, ever, and certainly not to 17 or 18 year olds who are just coming in and f sacrificing three pieces and these guys are getting up off the board going, I'm never going to play with him again. <laughs> you know, that was just a horrible experience and they, you know, they were having these traumatic, he was really traumatizing some, some players, but it catalyzed the chess world. Suddenly you know, he was a huge crowd favorite because the chess, it was just sensational chess to watch. I always felt that this match was really going to be uh, one of the more important symbolic events of the 20th century. And if you look at the history of computers, chess playing and beating a chess champion was one of the things the computers were never supposed to do. <laughs> For the match, I, can, I think David Levy made a prediction that Kasparov won by 6-0. It wasn't completely out of the question. But it's, it's scary to think about if that happened, we'll be in deep shit. Computers like coming in to Gary's position, like he's breaking through, you know, the dikes are broken, now everybody's coming through. Oh no, it looks terrible. Frustration mounts, Gary's pulling faces, absolute sheer disgust resigns the game. Kasparov's play during the second game of his match with an IBM computer called Deep Blue. He resigned in the middle of what he considered a hopeless situation. Instead of fighting for a draw, the match now stands at one game apiece. And Gary Kasparov, the world's chess champion in the IBM supercomputer, played to a draw in yesterday's fifth match. Some said Kasparov played more like a supercomputer and Deep Blue more like a human. There are one game each and three draws going into today's final match, in which Deep Blue has the advantage of making the first move. Winner gets $700,000, the loser $400,000. Forget the $300,000, says international chess master Maurice Ashley. The future of humanity is on the line. Now the weather. After six games over nine days, Deep Blue, the IBM computer, beat Garry Kasparov considered to be the best chess player in the history of the game. And whoa! Deep blue Kasparov! The great Russian champion was not a graceful loser. It, it, it was a shock because I never lost a match before. Uh, I could always recover. And, uh, and even with all the unfortunate set of circumstances in New York in 97, I believe that under different conditions, so just it's... Uh, uh, I could, uh, I could do it.